Okay, now that we've got all that preliminary stuff pushed aside, we're done with that, we can actually start looking at some of the parts and what some of the parts do as far as our computers go. We begin with the bus. The bus, it is just as it sounds. Little bits, zeros and ones get on and go to their destination, and zeros and ones get off at their destination. The bus, it's a bunch of wires that run through the motherboard and deliver communications between peripheral devices and the CPU and the memory and pretty much everything on the motherboard goes through a bus. The bus has a certain number of lines in it and if it had one line that's known as a serial bus. That is just one stream of zeros and ones doo -doo 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 -doo, going from one place to another place inside of the computer. There's a lot of different kinds of serial buses and won't get into them. Then there's the parallel bus. Think of a highway. A serial bus would be a one lane road. A parallel highway would be an eight lane highway or a 16 lane highway or a 32 lane highway. So the bus is essentially there to transport zeros and ones from one source on a computer to a destination on a computer and those are known as the computer bus. Now, what is a bus? Uh, where does it take it from and where does it take it then where does it take it to? Well, generally what we're talking about is input to processing and then to output. So let's begin with processing. What all is involved with processing and what are some of the components that are involved with the processing of a computer? Well, we have to begin with the big guy, the CPU, the actual chip itself, the central processing unit. And if you take a close look, hey, we got a chip. I'm going to put my finger out here so you can see the size of this chip. Look closely. That little thing inside there, less than the width of my finger, is the actual central processing unit. This guy right there is the central processing unit. That is it. The rest of this is the housing. The housing to get bits in to the processing unit and out of the processing unit. But that little guy right there, that's what makes everything go. Isn't that amazing how a small of a thing like that can do so much to the computer. We talked about the ENIAC. We talked about the first computer ever made, first electronic computer ever, ever made. And it was as big as a building, but it was maybe a million of the power of that little guy you see right there. That is why this business is so exciting because you have little wonder things like that all over the place. So that's a look at the CPU. Now I want to show you a motherboard. We're not going to go into detail about the motherboard, but I want to show you where the bus is, where you put things inside of the motherboard, and general terms as far as the motherboard goes. So in general terms, let's take a look at this motherboard. Now we're going to talk more about motherboards. We have a whole module dedicated just to motherboards and we'll take a look at some of the ancient motherboards. This one is pretty gosh darn modern right here. So some of the terminology that we use. First off the whole thing called a motherboard. It's also called the planner board or a system board. But if you use that terminology people will look at you strange. This is known as a motherboard and just about only as a motherboard. We have a chipset. The chipset, a little hard to see, but we have quite a few different chips on here that handle different processes for the motherboard. The chipset, it's a group of computer chips and it manages and controls the entire computer system. And then we have a data bus. You can't see this, but if you have a motherboard at home, go ahead and take a look. You have these little lines, these copper lines running through the actual board itself. Those are called traces and that is actually the data bus. Those are the lines in which the zeros and ones transport from say the expansion slots to the processor or to the memory. You have to get the zeros and ones through the actual motherboards to the different components and those are the data bus. And then we have the address bus. The address bus is going to be controlled by a controller and that keeps track of what memory address spaces 
different components on the computer have so they can all talk to each other and talk to each other easily. Here we have what's called expansion slots. These ones happen to be PCI slots, but if we had, and we'll again go through this more thoroughly when we talk about motherboards, we could have some longer ones here and some different ones here. Those would be the ISA or the Visa Local Bus. Here we have where we put our video card, and this is called an AGP slot, Advanced Graphics Port slot. Now, in here we have a clock, and that clock is hooked up to this battery right here. The battery is there to keep track of any kind of changes that we've made to the motherboard settings or the CMOS settings. Now, when you think about this clock, don't think about keeping time. Don't think about that little thing in your sys tray, which is the bottom right hand corner of a Windows 98 or, or 2000 desktop. Don't think of it as keeping time. It basically keeps a beat. It's like a conductor. It's like a drummer in a rock band. It goes boom, 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 boom. And everything coordinates, everything times around that boom, 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 boom. But this just happens to be the world's fastest drummer. I mean, if we're talking a 2 gigahertz clock speed, that is 2 billion beats per second. Try to dance to that. Might be a little bit difficult. Now, moving from the clock, we talk about the battery. And again, the battery, this little guy right here, is made to keep the settings that you change inside of the computer. Next, we go to the memory slots. You can see you can put memory inside of these. And of course, when we talk about memory, when we assemble this computer, we're going to put memory inside of here. Every motherboard is going to have memory slots to put memory inside of. Now, that is a look at the different processing, the different processing steps and the components that make up those steps for processing and they're all contained within this motherboard.